After a fun-filled weekend in Melbourne, it's time to head to the Southern Cross Station, but not for a train, for the coach station. Because today, I'm taking a bus to Adelaide. As you can see, it's super early, but at least the moon's out still. The Southern Cross Coach Terminal is located just behind Ravenous John's Burger franchise. This is also where you'll find the Sky Bus services to and from the airport. Now I booked my ticket today with Firefly, so I was expecting a Firefly bus. But it turns out we're on a Public Transport Victoria Regional V-Line bus. I'll explain a little more at our next stop. It does have a little Firefly logo written at the back though. Um, I just wanted to sign you off. Yeah. You're going to Adelaide, yeah? Yeah. Okay, mate. All good. Is that CTV? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Next, please. When I booked through Firefly, there was no seating allocation, but I've just been assigned an aisle seat. Ah. Anyway, this is my ride for the next 12 hours. Just a couple of things. It's going to take a couple of hours to go to Bendigo. Okay, my name is Larry. I'll be your driver for today. And once we get to Bendigo, I'll, I'll tell you more. There's only 12 of us on board, so Larry has allowed us to sit wherever we want, at least until Bendigo. We leave Melbourne bang on time, getting to catch the Melbourne skyline at sunrise. And look, the moon's still out. The sun started to make its way through, giving a golden tinge over the countryside. And the fog started to lift a little, just for aesthetics. Our seat today is a standard seat, there's no tray table or armrest, but there is a net on the seat back to store things in. There's a decent amount of leg room to stretch out a bit, as well as two USB sockets underneath the seat. The seat belts on the seats themselves, these are required to use by law. The seat itself has a little cushioning, but could do with a little bit more. This is a 12 hour bus ride after all. Having said that, the seat does recline a little or so. Above the seat there's an aircon and a reading light. And there's supposedly Wi-Fi on board, which I could connect to, but there's no actual internet connection. Almost exactly two hours after departure, we head into Bendigo. If you haven't been here before, it's definitely worth a day trip. You can easily grab a train from Melbourne. It's full of awesome things to see, as well as some old trams. We're given a 20 minute break at Bendigo Station, so let me try and explain the ticketing. You see, when I googled Melbourne to Adelaide by bus, it came up with Firefly. But what I've realised now, is you can book the same bus on the vline.com website. The only difference is you catch the train here to Bendigo and then meet the bus, instead of starting on the bus like I did. But the worst part is the tickets on vline.com are only $35.20, as where I paid $65 on firefly.com. $30 more for the exact same bus. But on top of that, with V-Line you can choose your own seats, and with Firefly you don't have that option. Hence my confusion when I boarded the bus. So it turns out the bus I'm on is the V-Line Adelaide Daylink. I'm not entirely sure if it's operated by Firefly or what. Let me know in the comments if you know. Anyway, back to the journey. Bendigo Station does have a little cafe in it. It's worth noting that no hot food or coffee is allowed on the bus. 
Once back on the bus, it seems not many met the bus from the train, meaning I now have an aisle seat all the way. Yay! In the next hour and a half, we pass through the old gold mining town of Tarnagala before stopping for lunch just outside St. Onard. We had 35 minutes here, stopping at the Junction Roadhouse. It's a little roadhouse with a small gift shop and a takeaway shop. I made the mistake of asking for potato scallops instead of potato cakes, so they didn't like me too much. All jokes aside though, the staff were actually very friendly, just don't mess it up. Once back on the bus we had the 3 minutes to the bus stop in town. It would have been nice to have stopped here for lunch, there's more options, but I'm sure there's reasons, like people being left behind, which we may or may not see later, is an actual thing. We spent the next three and a half hours travelling through the dry barren land that is Australia, occasionally pulling into little towns along the way. You see, this is why I like the bus. As long as the journey is, I wouldn't otherwise see these places, and while they're probably worthy of a bit more than a quick glance, it's still nice to have a tiny glimpse at them. Horsham is one of the bigger towns I've never been to. Here we meet two other buses, I think from Ararat and Ballarat. After Horsham we stop at Dimboola, Neil, which has a freaking pinball museum, and Keneva before crossing into the border into South Australia and heading to the appropriately named town of Border Town. We also turn our clocks back half an hour, because South Australia is a little bit behind. Wow, some of these stops really are in the middle of nowhere, aren't they? Anyway, we finally reach Keith, almost 20 minutes ahead of schedule, where we stop for lunch. This time we stopped at the Shell just outside of town, where we're given 40 minutes. It's quite well stocked, and there's a lot to choose from on the menu. You can even do your own washing here, or stay the night, if you wanted to. Fairly soon we're on our way for the last leg to Adelaide. Or, so we thought. We only made it 20 minutes down the track when we got the news, we've left someone behind, and need to turn back for them. To be fair, I saw Larry our driver go inside and tell everyone that we're about to leave, as well as walking all the way up to the back of the bus, asking at least 5 times if everyone was on board, and if anyone could see if anyone is missing. You see, this is why if you're travelling alone, you need to make a friend, because no one on this bus realised this person was missing. Needless to say, Larry wasn't happy. Are we going to be now? No. Right? No, we're not, we're not going to be now. Um, it's not my fault. I mean, oh, I, 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 honestly, I, what can I do? You know, yeah. we're all, you know, we're, we're, we're growing up. We're not school, we're not school kids. But unfortunately, um, we, we, our behaviour is, honestly, Fairly soon, we're on our last leg to Adelaide, for the second time. Speaking of number twos, there is a toilet on board. It was very clean and has everything you need, except room. There's not a lot of room, but this is a bus toilet, it'd be silly to expect more. The last part of our journey has us coming into Talon Bend, where if you look closely, you can see Australia's longest river, the Murray River. And shortly after at Murray Bridge, you can go over a bridge that crosses the Murray. Wow, they're really creative with their town names here.
All the remaining stops are set down early, so we drop a few people off at Mount Barker and then head into, or over, the gorgeous Adelaide Hills, where we make one last stop before leaving the gorgeous Adelaide Hills for the gorgeous Adelaide City. We're now towards the end of our epic 12 hour, 750 plus kilometer interstate journey, and despite our little setback earlier, we aren't that far behind schedule. So, is the bus a good option? Well, yes, if you don't have to rush and you have the day free. You see, you can take a plane, it will get you here quicker, but the cost is between $120 and $200, and there's also a train, which by the way you'll see on next week's video, but the cheapest ticket there is $135, and it takes the same amount of time. As you know, I booked a higher priced ticket today, but even that's worth it, because it's not only the price, if you've never travelled between these two state capitals before, it's the experience of travelling somewhere new. Our arrival today is at Adelaide Central Bus Station, which is pretty much in the main part of the city. I hope you enjoyed today's video, please remember to like and subscribe, it means a lot. Thanks for watching!